On today's show, I'm bringing back a returning company that was on my show back in August. We're talking about no other than VMT. They trade on the OTC markets under the ticker symbol VMNT. And with us today is the CEO and chairman of the company, founder also, Mr. Tan Tram. Tan, welcome back to the show. Good morning, Everett. How are you today? I'm doing well. Big news. You guys had big news last week. Congratulations on getting $30 million from the institutional capital partners. Wow. That's, that's huge, and it's definitely going to make uh, some big improvements and, and some uh, impact on your company. Uh, tell us a little bit about it, if you would. Well, thank you, Everett. First of all, let's, let's be clear that this is a result of many months of hard work by many people in our company and also from our partners, Axial and Variant. I have many people to thank for, and I feel so fortunate to have the level of support that I have around me. As I have stated many times, getting funding from institutional players is not an easy task at all. Uh, people who have done it can certainly attest to this. Not only this is a tremendous accomplishment, given the ongoing global pandemic, is also a major stepping stone for us. Getting this deal done has given us huge credibility and exposure to the investment community. It literally puts us in a different league and already has placed us on the watch list of many investment bankers and funds. Honestly, I, I have just been getting a lot of meeting requests. I guess it's, it's true that bankers are more willing to give you money when they think you don't need money, Everett. <laughs> I've heard that. Yeah. Uh, but anyhow, back to your question. Our mission has always been about making an impact and be a game changer. What we're doing now with our P2P landing platform is about going after low-hanging fruit to prove our business model and the addressable market. There needs to be a lot more in terms of product uh, diversifications when you're looking to be a dominant player in a $100 billion market. The new funding obviously allows us to increase our current lending capacity and generate more revenues, but it also gives us the resources to deploy new product offerings. You see, we're not out to be just an alternative lender to the SMEs. What we want to build is a decentralized financial ecosystem where individuals and businesses can transact directly across borders without using a bank as an intermediary. I'm talking about rolling out products such as P2P payments, uh, SME-level corporate bonds, and equity crowdfunding, and not just in our current footprint, but also to other markets in Southeast Asia. So clearly, we'll need a lot more capital to make that happen. $30 million might sound like a lot, but actually what I call just gas money in terms of what, <laughs> you know, going forward. Seriously. Right. Yeah, the good news is we already have the foundation to scale. And now we're supported by two multi-billion dollar funds. So all we have to do is to go out and execute. And with FinTech in high demand and with SME, I mean, with um, the SME markets in Southeast Asia becoming a global economic driver for the next 20, 30 years, the sky's the limit for us. For VMNT, first of all, is all about shareholder value, right? Uh, the math is quite simple. The new capital injection allows Elon to generate more revenues and profits, which in turn increases its valuation. Simply put, uh, we now have a portfolio company that's on its way to be a $100 million company. The question you should be asking me is whether we have plans to make Elon a wholly owned subsidiary of uh, VMNT. Well, it's a bit early to share with you on the details, but plans are being put together to give us a path of taking controlling interest of Elon. That, of course, you know, will give us a valuable asset on which we can leverage for other transactions, not to mention how the market will react. The bottom line, Everett, my job, first and foremost, is always to deliver what's best for the shareholders of VMNT. Well, you know, the last time you came on the show, I think your stock was trading around 15, 16 cents. It substantially went up from that. That being said, we, you were on the show, and you, and you recently mentioned that you guys were going to uplist uh, especially on, on your tweets. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, well, uh, we absolutely want to move up, uh, not only to adhere to higher SEC standards, but also to show the investment community that we are graduated to the next level and we're here to stay. And that is our purpose for the next six to nine months. My thinking is very simple, Everett. Uh, a company without a purpose is a company without a soul. A company without a soul is a company that's not going to be very successful. So when we set out to build this company, we already knew where we wanted to end up. But we also knew that it would take good planning and execution, so we would need to be patient and do things organically in steps. 
We also felt strongly uh, strongly that in order for us to thrive as a company, we would need a strong base of shareholders who not only believe in what we do, but also willing to play the long game with us. This is why we have always been extremely careful about toxic financing and equity dilution. Simply, we want to protect our shareholders by protecting the capital structure of the company first. So it's never been a, it's never been a question of if, but rather a question of when we would uplist. Two years ago, we could have uplisted, but we decided to pull back because we wanted to focus on um, focus our energy and resources on growing ELO first. So as you know, uplisting is not hard, there, but there got to be a valid reason to do it. It's not just about doing the SEC filings and paying the fees. It's more about um, our readiness. We wanted to have a compelling business case first. With e-loan developing nicely and with us soon in a position to take control, we feel now is the time. We have already engaged with a PCAOB firm to perform our 2018, 19, and 20 audits. The work is actually underway as we speak. Our goal is to be on OTC QB by Q2 2021, and then on to NASDAQ within two years. Also, um, part of the uplisting process requires us to work with a capital markets expert to help create awareness among institutional equity partners. So we've also engaged with a New York-based investment banker to assist us with that, along with the uh, capitalization process regarding Elon. On top of that, they have an extensive network of brokers and dealers across the country that will help market our stock as well. So, yes, I'm happy to confirm that we're indeed going through the process of uplisting. Well, let me ask you this. Last time you were on the show, we talked about the gold project. Um, is there anything new and exciting going on with that? Wow. Ah, of course. We need to talk about gold before we end our talk today, right, Everett? <laughs> well, during the last interview, we were discussing about acquiring shares in a gold refinery company in West Africa. So right. here's the latest. We presented our proposal to them, and it's been reviewed by their board members and major shareholders, and the feedback has been positive so far. The indication I'm getting is that they want to do this, but they need clearance from the local regulators before we can move forward. The reason is because um, we want a path of majority control eventually, not just 20% ownership. As you know, some countries are very cautious about foreign ownership in such a sensitive industry. Quite frankly, I'm, I'm glad that they're taking their time to be proactive about potential uh, legal roadblocks. That tells me that they're serious about making the deal happen. I would be a lot more concerned if their decision process was quick and casual. Uh, we do have another gold deal that we're looking at as well. Very similar structure. This is with a Singapore-based company that has three gold deposits located in Armenia, which have a, a combined value of $360 million, according to a report done by CSA Global, an industry-leading and well-respected independent mining consulting company based in Australia. We're going through some numbers right now to see what it means for us financially in terms of P&L. Uh, again, we working towards a structure that gives us a path to take majority ownerships of the three mines. But Everett, uh, allow me to explain more on why we're even looking at acquiring gold assets. Okay. As we look to expand beyond Vietnam and Southeast Asia for our fintech applications, one of the challenges we face is the use of fiat currency. Case in point, we currently have to convert USD to VND to lend to the local SMEs in Vietnam and back to the USD when it's time to do capital and profits repatriation. This is inefficient and has a long-term effect on our growth. As I had stated previous, uh, in a previous interview, throughout history, gold has been a valuable commodity and has demonstrated stability over time through economic downturns. Having such a time-tested asset in our portfolio allows us to quickly deliver our vision of building a decentralized and democratize economy where cross-border transactions are carried out directly among buyers and sellers, regardless of their physical jurisdiction, using a gold-backed cryptocurrency, another form of stable coin over AI-driven and blockchain-based fintech applications. This is precisely why we're looking at gold, as we believe its value will continue to rise in the coming years, whereas the same might not hold true for fiat currencies. My guest today has been Tan Tran. He is the CEO and chairman and president of VMNT Group. 
You can find them on the OTC markets under the ticker symbol VMNT. Tan, before I let you go, I'm going to give you the last words. What is it that you want my listeners and your stockholders to take away from today's interview? My message to our shareholders is effort. Thank you for supporting us and believing in us. It makes my job more fulfilling knowing that they are fully behind me. I'm playing the long game and I'm working for them. Take profit if you must, but stay with me as long as you can. I can guarantee that we'll always apply the best of ourselves at whatever we do for you. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Hopefully you'll come back on in, the, like I said, 40 or 50 days. And I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you for having me, Everett. Enjoy the rest of your week and uh, bye for now. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by La Jolla Media LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are for educational and research purposes. Stock Day encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. 